Wilson. Welcome to Wally's Welding World. I'm the Weld Professor. Today, we got some flanges that, of course, didn't get put on. So we're gonna have to put them on right here in position. It is what it is. Sometimes you ain't happy with what you gotta do, but just be happy you're working, right? So we're happy to be working. We're thankful to be alive. Bless God for creating the world, I guess, you know, cause it's amazing out here. Uh, destination's heaven. But yeah, we're just out here putting in some work and uh, I thought I'd just bring you into my little world right here and show you guys what we got going on. We got some, uh, what are they called, two and a 16? Mm -hmm. Two and sixteen, one, uh, two and one sixteen, five thousand wall flanges. We got to put on, and uh, we got five of them. We got to do, and we're gonna bring you to our world today and show you what it's all about. It's uh, a seven sixteen bead uphill, and then eighty eighteen out. All right, stay tuned, guys. So here we are. We're fitting it up with our badass uh, flange wizard and our our badass clamp that I got sent to us. This this clamp has come in really handy for me lately and I'm pretty much I'm using it to fit up the pipe. So I have to have a you know a pretty decent sized gap on this. And so you know mad shout out hooking me up with this. With this clamp real cool clamp and it's been helping me out a lot lately so that's what that is CMR fabrications with their mini pancake so mad shout out to my boy there too thanks Cody and my bullhead holding my grinders my remote all right We're ready to get started on this let's do it mad shout out to the homie that gave me the the leather protector for my bee stinger this is just a, a pinky of a glove that I cut off to protect the spring but this has been able to help us not arc out on nothing so I like that I just got a little whip going on it you know a little whip and again man shout out to my home girl Soko now I got it on third gear and I got the remote on 30 so that's what I'm running my tax at and my bee pass at Down 10. So I had to go down to 20 right away because it was hot. It was real hot. In the field, real experience. Ain't in no shop, guys. Ain't no shop, guys. Now I'm getting it level the other way. I gotta have it level this way. Oh man, it caused a big old gap on the bottom. We should have faced that off, dog. To make sure that it was it wasn't such a big gap. So pretty much we're coming behind a, a company called Black Eagle. They did all the prefab and they cut off a bunch of their fittings and nothing straight, nothing you know perfect, so that's our job. Keep me on 20 brother. Now I'm gonna attempt to do the bottom. Wedging it up, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attempt to get this rod inside of it. I'm pretty much backseat it like I have to do with the tape rod. Yep, do it good. Nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to try to get it in there. Morning, right? to fire up with a burnt rod because that's the possibility of getting some uh some ferocity in there. We don't want ferocity in there. Oh 
on my knees on some knee pads right now. Getting this bottom in. now I got the tacks in and, and they're called cold tacks so now we're gonna heat the piece up to 400 degrees and then we're gonna uh, grind most of the tack out run it one way grind the other tack out and run it the other way you got to grind the tacks all the way out when we heat it up like this all right so before before we we heat it up we're gonna go ahead and square it Did you grab a tape on your channel so we're basically just gonna run straight edge off of it and measure it to the pipe that's existing over here. Actually, grab the forefoot. Grab the forefoot. Might just be way too low. I don't know what's going on. So about 18 and 7 eighths. Yep, 18 7 eighths. No, no, just go to this right here. good enough because it'll probably draw this way and I'll, I'll run this side first. Nope, not hot enough yet. 300. Another 100 more degrees. 380. A little more. Alright, looks like we've reached our potential. 400 degrees. All right, good. Now I got my tax thinned on one side because we'll run this side first. All right, so hopefully we can nail it on the first take here. Go for it. 
One side in. Let's show you guys. Now I got one whole side in. It took me about two rods, but I'm, I'm taking quite of a big gap because you really got to walk it in there. Hey, give me the light real quick, Brent. You can see how big it is. This side, especially since I wedged it. And then if I shine the light in there, you can see it's all piled up in there. kind of hard to see but I'm gonna do my best to show you guys see that's just slag it's just piled up in there we'll show you guys once I knock it off so there it is on the inside that's the bead stacked up in there now I can't drag it downhill I got to go uphill with this it's really hard to focus trying to focus in on you guys but you can see the bead in there stacked up in there stacked up real good still a little bit of slag on it now we're attempting to go up from the opposite side. wind here but it is what it is down 10 
Up five. I can out here. It's really all I can do. It's not easy doing this in position. So you see here I had to I had to grind it from this side and then drag it back on the top. But I'm also consuming the whole entire bevel with this rod rocking it side to side. Now I know you guys want the arc shots and they'll, they're coming but I basically have to wash it way up like that all the way up the walls. So now we got a hot pad I mean a uh, grinded for the hot path it's best to take it down I feel like with a Dremel which is kind of like a burr bit that way you can get a good wash up on the walls here you gotta make sure you get all that slag out now we're going through the, the hot pass what's on 30 okay and we're doing that with the 8018 remotes on 30 uh, welders on third gear. as it is today I'm able to get away with this one hot pass and my hot pass is my flush so I'll be able to cast right after this chip that slag away. I always like to chip that slag away on the top and chip that slag away on the bottom then double check the bottom make sure you don't got any porosity a lot of people like to grind into that bottom they kind of got porosity to me looks good so let's keep going
don't even know if they could have seen the bead there. Oh, I thought they were able to see the bead. So I was trying to show you the bead glowing there, guys. I'm saying I'm able to flush it out in one pass at this point. Hand me that, that small file there, please. And I'll show you what I mean. See, so I knocked the slag off and it's pretty much flushed out. And like I said, I don't, I was saying, I don't, I don't grind the bottom, not because I'm cocky or anything, but I'm confident in my tie-in on the bottom. I always get a good tie-in, I feel like, on the bottom. I don't feel like I trap porosity. At this point now, we'll go ahead and buff it off and she'll be ready to cap. That'll be the first one completed. Now I'm gonna try to give you guys a bottom shot, me peeling off from the bottom, and this is gonna be me capping it now, so now I'm gonna cap this, this piece, and I'm gonna be uh, third gear on the remote. I mean, yeah, third gear on the remote, 30, third gear on the machine, 30 on the remote, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, a weave, just a little, a little bit of a weave with the 332-8010 Excalibur rod, H, H4R. All right, so get comfortable here sometimes I like to throw like a file or a wedge right here kind of kind of help me Break arc about halfway and then continue going all the way up. Alright, so now I'm gonna jump on the other side and do the other side. Hello, we're back again. Now I'm going from the opposite way and again I don't have to grind my bottom. I'm I'm confident. It's 98 degrees out here in Douglas, Wyoming today, so it's a little hot, so we got our umbrella up. Our umbrella up! Oh, it's rocking that foam, man. It's windy out here guys. And that's another thing too, I get I get asked a lot too, is if the wind interferes with my uh my welding and uh, if you keep a tight arc in the wind not really gonna mess with you too hard it messes with you a little bit but a skilled a skilled seasoned welder will know how to be able to carry that puddle without the wind interfering with them so Just pay attention again I didn't have to grind it I started off far enough it looks good to me so I'm gonna go ahead and take off again on 30 it seems like I'm carrying 30 all the way from the bottom to the top on the remote third gear on the machine halfway I'll switch my rods up if you're liking the content put a thumbs up I guess if you don't like it put a thumbs down it doesn't really matter as long as you're tuning in 
paying attention, following along, and actually learning something, you might be in this position someday. Um, you know, spread the good vibes, be a good person, and it'll take you a lot farther than uh, being a jerk or a dickhead and, and you know, uh, wanting to bash somebody, trying to have a passion and sharing it with everybody, which is what I do. So, like I said, sh uh, share this with your friends, share this with your family members, tell somebody new about it, let them know about me. say it but when you're when you're moving that that puddle and it's trying to whip around you got to learn how to make it your bitch sorry about my language but that's just an old school saying from a lot of welders is, is doing that to that puddle you got to know how to manipulate it how to force it to to flow the way you want it to flow even if the wind's kicking in behind you and uh you're in the conditions you know this is real life you know we're not we're not somewhere in a controlled environment this is way out in the middle of douglas wyoming this is what we're doing and uh it's important that you're safe out here and that you're following all safety aspects and I say that my safety glasses go oh I see them hold on so you know even I sometimes get complacent on safety but it's important to uh, have safety first let me grab my file right here let me chip my little slag off and I'll show you guys what it looks like before I, I uniform the sides real quick so there's the bottom of the weld you can see I broke our halfway up and then I carried it up we're not seeing any signs of porosity or anything which that's a good thing a little bit of a, a fat weave cap not the best but not the worst and I'm gonna go ahead now and ring it up and then show you guys what it looks like to my helper right there Brent he's badass man he's ready to rig out as well but here is a uh, here's the bottom after I ringed it now a lot of people think that the ring is a uh, a deep groove in the pipe but I assure you it's not it's it's basically a hundred percent for for appearance once they paint it this color it'll look good the toes will look good it'll look like a nice uniform weld we had a couple BBs on the side that I I just took down with a file but it's not it's not too shabby Brent said I nailed it on my first try I try to do my best I'm not the best but I believe in giving it your best at all times. Now another thing I did too was I put the, the label of what the flange is right on top where the two holes were. So that way the inspectors can come up and not search for it. They can find it right, right here. That's just important to me. I'd like to do that for people. I try to make their job easier. So. Uh, So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. That's today's tutorial. I got uh, four more to do. That was just one. One of them is as thick as this pipe, and then the other ones I have to transition down to the size of the pipe. But it is what it is. Mad shout out to all my people who support me across the world. And uh, nothing but love and respect. God bless you all. Have a great day. Peace.